Welcome to this week's Fireside Chat with Jesse. I am joined today by Susan Carroll, Chief Executive Officer of the Susan Carroll Creative. Thanks for joining me, Susan. Thank you. I love your program. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was uh, happy when you reached out and we talked about this because, um, you know, I think I've been in equipment finance. This marks the 17th year. And you've been at all of these conferences that I've been, been at since I've started. So I'm always flattered when, you know, industry veterans like yourself want to want to participate. So thank you again. Thank you. Yeah, it has been a few decades, actually. So let's let's dive into that. So uh, <laughs> for those people who might not be familiar with you, Susan, do you mind just kind of introducing yourself and you know how you got involved in this industry? Because a lot of people have hired, you know, get classified ads, right, to get in equipment finance. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, um, well, I head up a company that provides public relations services and also um, creative and marketing um, content, you know, really um, thought leadership type content for our, our clients. And um, but I got my start working at the ELFA quite some time ago. I was a communications manager. And um, I didn't think I would last very long in the equipment finance industry because finance wasn't my background. But um, what I discovered about the equipment finance industry is that the, the people that are in this industry are very creative and the capital flows to the new ideas and to the innovation. And that is what I find exciting about being in this industry. And, um, you know, so you started with the, was it the e ELA or what was it called? When oh my gosh. At that time, it was the American Association of Equipment Lessors. And when we answered the phone, we had to say that. And by the time you got done saying the whole name of the association, you know, if it was a reporter or something, they were already ready to hang up. <laughs> I heard American and then I just kind of like was like, all right, whatever. <laughs> yes. Yes. How did it go from that to... I think when I started it was EL, ELA. Then it was ELA. Mm -hmm. And then, then it became the ELFA. And who knows where what it's going to be next. <laughs> we'll, we'll just stick with that for now. I don't need Ralph being like, what are you guys doing? Like, come on, we're already branded. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I should add about my firm too is that we're not just in the equipment leasing and finance industry. We've been in technology from the very beginning. We were very much on the cusp of the e-commerce wave and the in the dot-com era, and then also healthcare has been a, a big category for us as well. Yeah, that was one of the things I was going to ask. So when did you leave the ELFA and, and, and go out on your own? And, and It was the late 80s. Okay, and how, how was that? Um, well, right after I worked at the ELFA, I spent a year at MCI. Okay. And when it, it was when I was at MCI, they were developing um, email, actually. And I was working on their, on a, on a what was it called? Um, we were working on a newsletter that you could do on your computer. I forget even what that was called. But um, it occurred to me with email and the way we were working there that you could work from anywhere. Hmm. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to have a family, and I said, and go, 40 years ago, I mean, what a thought, what a concept. <laughs> yes, yes. So we, um, the, the company has been virtual since 1989. Wow. Yeah. So that's a true, that's a true trailblazer right there. The, and the, the funny part about like equipment finance, um, like I said, I think I got it in 2005, is when you go look up someone, when it's like, oh, I haven't heard of that company, and you go look at like their website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When was the last time this thing was updated? <laughs> well, I know, yeah. So yeah, we were, um, I know what it was. I couldn't think of the term. It was desktop publishing at the time. Okay. That was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, going out on your own, started the Susan Carroll Creative, um, just yeah. going after organizations just to assist them with their marketing activity, rebranding, just yeah. now well, yeah. My my studies were in journalism. So originally I was a reporter before I then I got into I started working for the Army Corps of Engineer uh, Engineers overseas for a while as a civilian. 
And, um, and then when I came back to America, I decided to really dedicate myself to public relations. I became accredited in the PR society. And, um, and so really I've um, just always been working with news media and working in communications all of my life, really. Where'd you go overseas? Anywhere fun? Oh yeah, Italy, okay. Germany. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It was a good experience. No, I, I absolutely, especially, uh, you know, when you're younger, you know, explore all those places. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I just want to, so equipment finance, when you targeted these organizations in the late eighties or nineties, um, you know, what are you looking for, um, you know, in an ideal client, Susan? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I mean, all of our clients are very innovative. And so they're either cutting edge, which makes them very exciting, or they're global. And so they're, you know, giving us a new perspective. Uh, but we've worked with all size and types of companies. Uh, sometimes they're companies that are new to the equipment leasing and finance industry, and we're helping them sort of navigate this world and introducing them to other influencers. Um, but what I really like is looking at the big picture, looking at how our clients' interests dovetail with what's going on in the news, what's going on economically in the markets, and um, working with them on, on how, you know, how they position themselves and communicate about their part in the industry. Yeah, and that's, um, you know, you, you probably had an exact formula for success or whatever you, you know, prefer to call it. <laughs> And then, you, and then you throw this social media <laughs> kind of curveball in it in regards to the promotional. Well, I think of like a LinkedIn or Facebook or some of that stuff where, you know, it's you went away from traditional print, right? You had some email yeah. stuff that's going on and now you have social media. Um, what did that do here, your business? It's not a problem for me. I'm, when I started my firm, there was a, um, the there was a manual for how to run a PR firm. I said, I don't want it. I, I don't want that manual. <laughs> I'm just going to respond to what my customers need. Uh, we're not the kind of agency that has a process or a way of doing things and you have to fit into it. And um, I've always been a future thinking person. So I love evolving and, and moving into these new channels and looking at how you know, how we can keep adapting. One of the things I'm looking at right now is the Axios style of writing, which is very, very um, precise and brief and to the point, and which is a journalistic style. And it works really well in, in the world today because we have so many channels to follow. It's not actually a bad, uh, when we're, when we're talking with people at conferences, can you say, hey, can you give me the Axio style of what you do, please? That would be fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. The, the point of that is, you know, what is it and why does it matter to me? Yeah. Let's cut the cut to the cut to the chase here in regards to what we're doing. No, I, I like that. I like That's that. Mm -hmm. So, but when I write articles for people and they say, hey, we wanted 3,000 words and I only gave them 2,000, that'll be my response. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well then, uh, but there's always a button that says, and for more information, click here. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm just trying to think of, you know, kind of the evolution of the whole marketing, um, you know, over the years, um, just kind of like lessons learned, um, or is it still at the end of the day, a similar process of when you started? Hmm. Lessons learned. That's good. That's a really good question. I guess, I guess the most important lesson that I've learned is that I'm not the best at anything. And so it's really important to have a team and have other people that are experts at what they do and let them do it. Um, I learned that lesson really early on and I assembled a team that I'm really proud of. Uh, and I couldn't, I don't, you know, we call it Susan Carroll Creative, but there are so many people working with me that are so talented. And 
I think that's important is to bring in people that are more talented than yourself and then let them blossom. Absolutely. So it's the Susan Carroll Collective Creative, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we used to be called Susan Carroll Associates Public Relations, and we changed it to Susan Carroll Creative because we realized that some of the things we were doing, people could just Google and find examples of how to do it. You know, like a press release, for example, they were finding one and then just using that as a template. And so we said, what is it that we can do that you can't just Google? And it's the creative side. It's the creative thinking. So I went to school, I graduated from West Virginia in 2003 with a BA in marketing. Um, and, you know, I went into sales, you know, what do you, what do you do with a marketing degree, right? Either go into sales or some kind of a marketing aspect. So for up until a year and a half ago, when I joined JDR, I was truly just on the sales side, you know, so the interaction between sales and marketing is constant, but not really you don't get that much impact, or at least in my previous organizations, I really didn't have much say. Now at JDR, when I'm in charge of sales and marketing, and you know, it's a division of me <laughs> for both of those, yeah. where it's like, oh, now I get to write my own press releases or working with a team, and it's okay, I now I need to create these advertisements or graphics, you know, and it's just it's a different appreciation. However, it's completely different than it was. I don't know, 17 years ago when I went to school. Sure, sure. Yeah, and I think, I think that the challenge for a lot of organizations is they, they want to hire somebody out of just coming out of college with a marketing degree, and they want them to be able to do so many things. And it's, you know, I, for example, when you build a website, you know, you, you need the, the creative thinking for the navigation and the content, and then you need the design, you need the technology. Um, but I do see all the, a lot of silos coming down. And, you know, there used to be a real division between public relations and human relations and, and the technology department. And now it's, you know, we all work together. Well, not only that, though, I think traditional marketing degrees in college and universities are B2C. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of B2B courses or specialty. And I would think that equipment finance is extremely unique, <laughs> where when you have one organization, I remember when I first started cold calling, you know, you'd make 100 phone calls and they'd all be brokers. Right. What, right. You know, what, there's only so much value you're going to have for those individual compared to funding sources, service providers. So yeah, anyhow, kind of rambling on here, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's interesting, it really is. I, I like hearing your perspective. So I want to, um, to shift over to kind of, um, I mean, when this records, or we're recording on International Women's Day. Um, so, you know, highlighting, you know, fantastic women throughout the world. You know, I consider you to be one of the pioneers, um, you know, on the women's side and equipment finance. And um, just kind of wanted to get your thoughts, Susan, on, you know, the leadership role or just women in general in equipment finance over the years. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I don't work in an equipment finance business, but I, um, you know, I, I think that uh, when I first started working at the ELFA and, and in the early part of my career, it was predominantly men. And um, I felt that I needed to play down my, the fact that I'm feminine. That was really important to me to not appear too feminine, or I thought it would be viewed as weak. And I think that um, what I really appreciate today is that you can be feminine, you can also be perceived as a leader and as an important part of a team. So that's a change that I see taking place. And um, I really love the way the ELFA has embraced this and the other trade associations as well. I went to the, um, the first women's conference that the ELFA sponsored. And I went to the second one also. And, and at one of those, Chris Snow was talking about how, um, how it's not about balancing work and home family life and, and, and work, but it's more about how to integrate that in, integrate everything. And that really resonated with me because 
because my my company's virtual, I was able to raise two children and and run my business at the same time. And I would sometimes take my daughter on business trips with me. And that was educational for her as well. So it's not, there doesn't have to be a hard line between your work and your, your home. But I do think we need some boundaries in that people need to rest a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> you know, just because you have your work in your home doesn't mean you have to be on night and day. Well, and that's one of the big topics that we talk about with the, the EFC events is that work-life balance. And mm -hmm. we're seeing it almost more now than ever where people are just getting burned out because exactly. it's, now you have the tech. I mean, you, we've always had these, right? I mean, not, right. not always. I think I've had an iPhone for, I don't know, 12 years now. Um, so it seems always, like always. <laughs> always see, right? You can always see like emails and everything on a continual basis. But now I think the pandemic forced everyone to be able to have a, work, a laptop at home or access to the system or anything else. And are, what are people doing? Like, are they, are they working? Like when I see like my employees on at like 10 o'clock at night, because they're on the East Coast, I'm on the West Coast. I message them like, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? Like, is everything okay? Just kind of checking in because, you know, I'm trying to show that support where, you know, it's like I value what they're doing, but it's also like, go to bed. Like, this right. wait till tomorrow. You don't need yes. to be doing this now. Yeah, I have um, some controls set up on my, the technology that I use. For example, I don't check email on my phone. Oh. Only on my I only on my iPad or my computer. So I just, I need, you know, there are certain things I want to take some time and think about it when I'm doing it. I don't want to rush something off in an email while I'm busy doing something else. Yeah, I've heard of, uh, what is it, digital detox? <laughs> yes. And while it sounds fascinating, <laughs> it's also <laughs> super stressful too, because I'm like, I don't know what to do. Oh, it, I mean, I mean, I totally freak out if I ever think that I lose my phone. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like the right arm now. So um, I know you started off in this industry with, I'm going to just want to say the ELFA. Sorry, I, American equipment, less or worse. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, ELFA is fine. <laughs> One of the things I focus on with this site, with this show is just kind of the importance of the trade associations and what they can do to an individual's career. Yeah, well, um, I'm probably the only person that worked as a staff member at the LFA. I was a communications manager and Ralph Petta was there at the time. He was in the research department. He's still there, of course, now the president. Yeah. But um, then I went on, when I joined ELFA as a member, I went on to serve on the Service Provider Business Council and then the Communications Committee. And then I wound up on the Board of Directors. And now I'm back in the Service Providers. Well, anyway, the point is it's very valuable. And I always recommend to my clients that are new to the industry, get involved, get on a committee, you know, align with the other influencers and use social media to stay in touch in addition to going to the, the events. Yeah, I can bet. I mean, like I'm, when I look at the events, right? Because if you're, you're on your own, right? You don't have a huge travel and entertainment budget. So right. you be very selective in the events that you can go to. So if you had to pick out like two ELFA events to go to, or maybe like an NEFA, if you've ever gone to any of their events, which ones would you recommend, Susan? Oh, um, well, I want to say, first of all, that I love the NEFA events as well as the LFA, and I love the ones that are on the beach in California. <laughs> two weeks. I saw the countdown today, two weeks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but um, for the ELFA, I would say Capital Connections is very important. And the convention. If I had to go to only two, I would go to those two. No, I, I agree. I mean, you get a lot of face time with senior executives at both of those events, especially Capital Connections. I didn't even really know about that until about five years ago when I joined the service provider, you know, community. Well, and you're providing a valuable service to the members and to the ELFA by being a part of that. And also, 
that's where all the um, committees and councils come together and have a meeting as well. What advice would you have, Susan, for new entrants into equipment finance? Well, I, the, the equipment leasing and finance industry has always been characterized by having um, creative people, entrepreneurs, and so I think that the new entrants have to be specialists. They have to differentiate themselves in some way. Um, most everyone says they provide good customer service, but I mean, now it has to be amazing. <laughs> and um, they certainly would have to be uh, very tech savvy. And, um, and, and I think that they would need to have a, a real diversity on their team. You know, I, I think that this, the next generation is really helping this industry evolve. And so I think that's important too. I'm really excited to see the next generation getting involved, like you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like, I feel like I am waiting for the next generation. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, but I, I, I get that. And what's amazing is you mentioned the specialist portion of that. Um, and that's, that's a good point. I mean, in this industry, we have people that only focus on one piece of equipment that might only be a half a percentage of the equipment ever leased, but yet mm -hmm. they've done it and they do it extremely well. They get higher margins and that's their niche. Well, and they might differentiate not only in terms of the kind of equipment but in the way that they operate, the tools that they use and the approach they take. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing a separation between the technology, the companies that lease equipment and have a technology backing behind it, and then the mm -hmm. traditional finance organizations. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the old way of doing business is definitely history. No. No, if I can't see what my machine's doing on this phone here, then you know what, something's wrong. It doesn't exist, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Um, so Susan, I ask everyone who comes on here to provide a little fun fact about themselves. Other than the fact that you don't check email on a phone, I thought that would have been fantastic. Well, I know a lot of young people that don't check email, period. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I thought about that question. It was the hardest question because it's personal, right? Something personal. Um, so I thought, okay, well, I'll tell you what gives me the most joy other than my children and my grandchild. And that is dancing, ballroom dancing. And the faster, the better. I like the disco, the swing, okay. and the cha-cha. Okay. So that's a fun fact. Any videos of you doing any ballroom dancing? Oh, there just might be but be hard to find somewhere deep, deep in the past of YouTube. <laughs> well, it's been a while. Note to self, if there's ever an event, look around the area and see if there's any ballroom dancing because Susan enjoys yes. it. Look me up at the convention when the music starts. It's always disappointing because no one ever gets out and dances and they always have these great bands at the, at the convention. Nope, they look at me and they're like, Jesse, come on. I'm like... <laughs> I got, got an ankle thing. I golfed the other day. Sorry, I can't. I, you don't want to see this dance. Nope. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's that's the way it is. Um, and then kind of my last question I have is, you know, why should an organization um, or individual reach out to you, Susan, to do business with the Susan Carroll Creative? Mm, I appreciate that question. Um, well, we, uh, we've been focused on this industry for 30 years. So... I think a lot of times businesses reach out to us because they don't want to spend a lot of time trying to educate someone about what equipment leasing is and all the terminology and everything. We can be up and running pretty quickly. And then also, as I mentioned, um, well, I have a journalistic background, but a lot of my writers have a journalistic background too. So they're very savvy with the media and they are deadline oriented and they write succinctly and they never stop until they've really got all the facts together. So I think that we create content that is, it's not fluff. It's, we create valuable content for our clients so that they can become thought leaders and they're providing content that's valuable to their, their audience. And I think that's fine. 
I, I definitely understand that. I mean, that was the intriguing part about me coming to JDR was the outsourcing of the back office or even front office. And when you take it that next step further, why would I want to invest in a marketing team, train them how to do things and everything else. And you constantly have that when you could go to the Susan Carroll creative and you help set the strategy and you pay as needed. And we're, um, we're not the kind of firm, there are some firms out there that force their clients into their workflow or their process. We aren't like that. We're like, well, how do you want to work? And then we, we adjust ourselves to our clients' workflow and their style. Which can be a very patient process. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and we're patient and we like... Um, I, I I, I say that all joking aside. I, I love that one again. Well, what would, what would you recommend? Like, it's your business. Like, like you really want to tell you how to do your business? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we and we like um, the the complex subjects because in our other categories, to our other niches in technology, sometimes that can get very very deep and very complex. But we love those kinds of challenges. Absolutely. Well, Susan, I really appreciate your time today. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Um, hopefully, are, are you going to be coming up? Uh, are you going to the women's conference in Chicago in April? I'm not going to be there, but I will be in Washington for the Capital Connections. Okay. So I'll see you there, hopefully. I will be there. But okay. um, I really then, appreciate your time today and uh, look forward to seeing you here in the near future. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks, Susan. Bye-bye.